What are the reasons why someone who's great at sales would decide to join an organization as opposed to go out and be an entrepreneur like what all the marketing seems to suggest is the dream job to get? I think we're a little bit, if I just sort of generalize here as a society, obsessed with the idea of independence to an extreme. You know, I have, I don't know if I would, maybe it's just an observation, maybe it's an opinion, we'll call it an opinion, where you know, I went to public school. I went to traditional education, public school. I went to an art school in Florida to finish my education. I don't have anything special in terms of my background. But what I realized as I got further into my career is that while my peers graduated college with, I, I like to use this analogy of a Lego mat, right? Everyone knows what Legos are, kind of universal in that sense. The green mat that came with like the house that you were gonna build or the car or whatever, that like kind of foundation, if you will, that's really where folks leave primary education. And then some folks have, you know, uh, four six by six blue blocks stacked up. Those are the folks that specialized in marketing or, you know, business or or they want to be lawyers or doctors, the, the specialists. I didn't come out with that. I had this sort of like hodgepodge of different bricks, different Legos on my mat. And over the first couple of years of my career, I started to get better at bringing those together and building more of a pyramid than a tower. And I think fundamentally, when you look at the kind of landscape, if you will, of where opportunity sits, the people that specialize do it because we've been told for a majority of our lives that you should do that. You go to college, you get a degree and you go and focus on whatever that degree is in terms of your career. I think what's happened and is happening more now is that over the last, you know, call it seven to 10 years or so, people are waking up to the fact or maybe becoming more uh, interested in the idea of not following that path. Traditional education, in particular in the United States, was built on the concept of producing worker bees. It was an industrial revolution need, and we did it because we needed to build factory workers and skilled laborers and folks that could go and fulfill the jobs that were necessary for us to build the society that we have. Now, I, I sound like I'm sort of pontificating, but research shows that that's actually true. What's fascinating as you fast forward to today, the people with natural skills, great salesperson, great at customer service, et cetera, are still being told to go and learn some sort of a vertical. And that makes sense. I don't judge that. I myself went that path. But I think what you're seeing more of is that when they leave that primary education opportunity, they realize that because of the way that the infrastructure of the world has evolved, technology gives you access to education, to people, to travel, et cetera, that being a bit more free and a little bit more flexible is the way, right? People are more and more interested in that conceptually as a way of living. And so I think if you sort of look at the big picture at the end of the day, you know, the end of the day here, that fundamentally, when we know that we are good at something, we are told by everyone else to go and do it. And I think when you're in sales, it's a great path to make a lot of money, right? I mean, if, if you get into the right organization, you can make more money than a CEO in many ways. I, I have peers that have done that. I've come close to doing it. And I think in that context, what's really fascinating is you can make a mountain of money, you can deliver great value, you can have a great job and be rewarded, but not own the responsibility of the organizational weight. And I think if you really start to look at the individuals that take on CEO roles, I do think at, a, at its core, being a CEO entrepreneur, somebody who's going to build an organization, being a salesperson in that personality does bode well for it. You're either super technical, like a CTO personality, or you're a CEO, which is usually business and sales centric, but not everybody wants to go and build something. And what's fascinating is I've actually myself been given that feedback quite a bit. Barrett, why don't you just go and, and start something? You'd be great at this. You have such a business acumen and sales skills, everything else you described. I'm, for listener's sake, uh, context, I'm 38 years old. I'm a dad. I'm a husband. You know, I've got a life in that sense. I would love to go and be an entrepreneur, but I don't have, at this stage of my life, the kind of intestinal fortitude, the gut strength to go and take that risk. Maybe if I was younger, I had a different perspective perhaps. But what I enjoy is the ability to think about someday, and I will someday, I'm open about this, leave HubSpot, going somewhere where they've started something already. And so if I'll kind of, again, land the plane for you, but I think about business or and organizational structure in three different stages, building, growing, and scaling, building their go-to-market, growing their, their kind of business, if you will, and scaling their opportunity. I know that I'm not a building stage guy initially. I don't love to ideate in the beginning as much as I think my peers do. And so, you know, if I think about the traditional salesperson, they tend to fit in late stage build through grow. And then some of the ones that enjoy the kind of bigger picture are more of the scale stage. Very rarely do you find folks, I think, that are, and again, typically it's like making a lot of money and, and wanting to give that up to go and build something from scratch. I really appreciate that because again, I, I think I want to take away the um, the singular focus on the only way to have success is to be an entrepreneur and everything else is you're a corporate slave. And I think that's far from the reality of the world, especially as companies are maturing, are creating cultures that are supporting the kind of lifestyles and being financially rewarding. As you've seen what you've experienced, I've experienced it in myself. And I think I want to make sure that for a lot of people, you know, I, I've seen 
the path of entrepreneurship to be chosen before the skill sets get to be developed. And I often yeah. encourage a lot of my listeners saying, hey, if skill, sales is not a skill you've developed, which I do think is one of the most essential skills to develop to have success in any area, find an organization where you can have that rapid feedback loop and development cycle to build that kind of resilience that is necessary to sell. And, uh, and I, I don't want to have people shy away from being part of an organization to do uh, that kind of activity. I've I've did telephone sales in a real estate organization that allowed me to have high volume. I see you worked in restaurants, which allowed you to interact with so many customers. And I've noticed a lot of people that are in the tech world, you would probably say the product focus or tech focus that are so about their idea, but never speaking to anyone. And it's being built in a vacuum. And then when they go to present it to someone, there's like an awkwardness or at least this lack of natural understanding of what are you truly try, really trying to solve for those people. And I think that's developed through being exposed to the people. And I think organization provide that testing ground to do so. And, uh, and I would say you're doing very well. And that's awesome that you get to do these opportunities within an organization. I can relate. I'm very much similar to you. And, uh, and that's why I chose to be a part of an organization for so long because it allowed me to have that space to do even more.